My name is Jonas Stenström, I'm from Sweden. I am a science filmmaker with a background in biology. We're here at Jackson Hole Wildlife Film Festival, currently called Jackson Wild. Uh, it's essentially a conference that is also a film festival. It's a meeting point for all the people in the industry uh, and it's also a time and place to share ideas and thoughts on how to save the world. It is surprisingly hard to do science communication effectively, I think. Uh, there's so many struggles to actually get this message out the right way so that the public can digest it in, a, in an easy way. Uh, and there's arguably and surprisingly a lot of misconceptions when it comes to nature and wildlife these days, I think, that the general public can't see. And it, it's, um, it's pretty much our job to try to break it down to something that is easy and uh, easy to digest and easy to take in and also something that relates to your life. I mean that's essentially why we, we have to do this. We have to protect this planet but we have to find effective ways to do that and get the public on our side. I think that there's not just one way to communicate what we're doing. There's multiple ways, multiple platforms but I think they're all extremely important. We're touching different demographics, uh, different age groups, different occupations, and just different lifestyles. So uh, big blue chip films, they have their niche. Going out on big networks, big channels, definitely super important. That's what inspired me when I was young. I was watching many of the big productions. I was just, I was just sitting there in awe, just seeing how much cool stuff is out there. Uh, but then stuff that's being put out online is also incredibly important because that's where many of the eyes are these days. We have, all of us have screens and we, we watch YouTube on a daily basis. And I think getting things out quick is also extremely important. So I think every, every outlet has its value. Um, and a festival like this is such a good meeting point where you, you get to communicate with people producing things for different platforms. You get to merge thoughts and ideas and, and you know, find the best way to have an impact. I find, I always say that you can't protect what you don't know about. But I also found as a scientist, it's really hard to protect what only a small group of people know about. So talking within the circles of people that are already interested, it's not, I mean, it's gonna do a little bit of difference, but it's not gonna make a huge difference. We have to find ways to reach a broader audience and a festival like this is a really good way to talk about those things and how to find the best way to change the world. So it's pretty amazing how the technology has changed since we started what we do today. Nowadays, pretty much everyone has a camera. Uh, you can tell stories on a daily basis. You can throw stories up online super easy. But there's also interesting tools that we can use to really get people kind of drawn into this world and understand it a lot better. For example, we try to incorporate uh, 360 videos and photography into a lot of the stuff that we do now, creating a big platform um, that will include a big package uh, to tell a bigger story. Um, so with 360 videos, for example, these days, you can have, you can give the viewer an experience of an environment, really put it in persp perspective what we're trying to talk about. I mean, if you talk about snow leopards or, or tigers and protection and all kinds of stuff, it's, it is really distant still. People like cute and cuddly animals, but it's hard to imagine what the habitat is like where they live and understand the struggles that go into actually protecting these animals. So with simple tools like 360 videos, you, you get a chance to look around and actually see what it is like. And I think that's, that's one powerful way that we can get people interested and also wanting to help out. For me, Nature in the natural world is something that comes natural. Like, I could not imagine living in a world where, where I can't experience this. I can't take my kids out in nature. I would hate for my kids to grow up not having the chance to see a lot of the things that I've been fortunate enough to experience. It would, it would be so painful to me if I had to explain what an animal was that I saw when I was a kid. If I had to explain what an elephant was, and it's something that we go and just, you know, view in a, in a not even a zoo or just a museum, it, it, I, I don't know how I could, like, live with myself if I haven't tried hard enough to try and protect the stuff that I, that I was inspired by when I was a kid, and still am. Um, I, I think we, a lot of times, we take so much for granted, right? Just because we have a lot of these cool gadgets and a lot of the technology and all of the cool skills doesn't mean that we should be 
acting like we can do whatever we want. We can't control everything. I mean, the whole the whole uh, biodiversity web is, is something that I think is beyond us. We don't understand everything and how everything works. And I think it's uh, it's so easy for us to just take the leading role and say that we know everything and what's best. But I think when it comes to nature, we, we have to understand that everything is here for a reason, usually. Uh, and I don't think we can survive. Well, I know we can't survive without biodiversity. So we can't really choose what species we want to get rid of. Sometimes I wish we could because, you know, you're out on a sunny day and you're covered in mosquitoes and you go, what the hell? Like, I don't want to have these animals here. But we can make that decision. These are food for a lot of the other animals that then in turn, you know, are important for another purpose. So as much as we want to think that we are in control, we also have to understand that we're not the only ones here and we're not the most important species on the planet either.